Good evening, good evening, good evening, folks. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels. And yes, we are going to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we do the usual disclaimers, and I apologize in advance for looking like a train wreck. My defense... My Christmas packages are getting delivered all, like, at the same time. I've got, because I refuse to wrap, I've got tissue paper everywhere. I've got boxes everywhere. I just got my Yankee Candle scents in. They smell wonderful, by the way, but not the point. I'm a wee bit of train wreck, folks, so apologies in advance. Uh, We are. Now, to the disclaimers. We're just going to cut into it. Forgive me for the awkward. Folks, if you are unfamiliar with the Stop the Shocks campaign or the campaign against the troubled teen industry, you're going to find all the pertinent links right there in the description box, right along with the link that you are going to see here. Please Take particular note of the article written by Neuroclastic, a small non-for-profit started by Autistics for Autistics, wherein they interviewed and surveyed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to the JRC's so-called behavior modification program. The Judge Rotenberg Educational Center doesn't want you to read that article so much. They have threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit. They did not remove it from the website. Well, folks... Neuroclastic has refused, so you know the drill. Please read the article and share it on all your social media. Please also note we have in there Neuroclastic's public statement regards to the defamation lawsuit threat, as well as a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding in case the JRC actually sees through with their threat. All right, folks, trigger warning one. When we discuss places like the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center and Agape Boarding School for Boys, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of pupils with disabilities, disabled people. It's a long night, folks. Long night. Also, people with mental health issues. So if you are watching this and you have kids, Use your headphones. All right. Second trigger warning. This channel is marked not for kids for a reason. We use profanity on occasion and speak on dark subjects. If your child is 16 and younger and watching this, very obviously parental supervision is advised. What we are going over here, for reference, since we just went over the D.C. Circuit Court's overturn in regards to the FDA 2020 decision to ban the GED device. We are going to go over that publish of that ruling from back on March the 6th of 2020 as a means to go over exactly what it is the FDA actually said. Because I be salty that way, folks. Now, if you hear me clear my throat or any other weird noises, I am too tired to even try to think clearly, let alone try to figure out how to use the edit tool that I just figured out I had. So, apologies in advance, all right? All right. Agency, Food and Drug Administration, HHS. Action, final rule. Summary, the Food and Drug Administration The FDA, the agency, or we, is finalizing a ban on the electrical stimulation devices, ESDs, for self-injurious or aggressive behavior. This is where I think is tripping them up. They could have just said the get. See, this is the problem, folks. When you're dealing with government, they like to go into detail To the point that it kicks them in the foot, almost. You could have just said the device. Just going to call that out immediately as I see it. 
The FDA has determined that these devices present an unreasonable and substantial risk of illness or injury that cannot be corrected or eliminated by labeling. This ban includes both new devices and devices already in distribution and use. However, this ban provides transition time for those individuals currently subject to ESDs for the identified intended use of the transition off ESDs under the supervision of a physician. Okay, here's my first question. Why are we not naming the GED device specifically? See, this is where you get tripped up, FDA. Okay? Because you just labeled it as ESD, this is how these bastards were able to take it and run with it. If you just use a broad term like this, this is where they can catch you with that catch-22 about how they you need to ban all the devices because you didn't get quite specific enough about the specific device for which the ban was asked for in the first place, okay? You can sit there and say, but that might seem like we're targeting. Well, in this case, we actually are targeting. So by being broad and trying to be magnanimous, you shot yourselves in the foot. I could be wrong. I hope as we go through this article, you actually point out that it is the GED device that is actually the device in question. Right? All right, the date, this rule is effective of April 6, 2020. However, compliance for devices currently in use and subject to a physician-directed transition plan is required on September the 2nd, 2020. Compliance for all other devices is required on April the 6th, 2020. The JRC got around that because that was during the time of COVID. Just to kind of let you guys know why I got so angry about around that time in April when I had my first, you know, rant on the subject. Addresses for the access to the docket to read the background documents or comments received, go to, you could find this link to get that link, folks. Insert the docket number in the brackets in the heading of this final rule into the search box and follow the prompts and or blah, 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 blah for further information. Okay, executive summary. And we're going to start with this and leave off because we got more videos to do. The FDA is banning ESDs for self-injurious behavior or aggressive behavior. ESDs are adversive conditioning devices that apply a noxious electrical stimulus, a shock to a person's skin to reduce or cease such behaviors. SIB and AB frequently manifest in the same individual, and people with intellectual or developmental disabilities exhibit these behaviors at disproportionately high rates. Notably, many such people have difficulty communicating and cannot make their own treatment decisions because of such disabilities, meaning many people who exhibit SIB or AB are part of a vulnerable population. Here we go with that again with the whole, but you can't really make your own decisions. Do you want to know how many times people tried to tell me that shit? I'm pushing 40, folks. I still have people who try to pull this shit, all right? In spite of the fact that I am very skilled at articulating what I want and the reason why in alphabetical order, in extreme analytical, direct and to the point language, okay? Yeah, you get my point. I think when a person screams, no, no, that's pretty clear communication, don't you? Just saying. 
SIB commonly includes head banging, hand biting, excessive scratching, and the picking of skin. However, the SIB can be more extreme and result in bleeding, broken, and even protruding bones, blindness from eye gouging or poking, or other permanent tissue damage, injuries from swallowing dangerous objects or substances. We go over this. This is the crap people use to try to demonize us and basically turn us into uh how would I put this? Out of control children? Yeah. I'm still treated like I'm six. Send help. AB involves repeated physical assaults that can be a danger to the individuals, others, or property. In this rule, like much of the scientific literature, we discuss SIB and AB in tandem and use the phrase SIB or AB to refer to SIB or AB or both. Okay, I am starting to see the very glaringly obvious problem here. This is where the FDA fucked up big time. By using the general term of ESD saying it cannot be used for self-injurious behavior, as opposed to targeting the GED specifically. That's what fucked them over, very obviously. Okay? This is actually one of the first times that I'm reading the final rule. I've read all the documents up to this. You and I, all of us have done this. But I'm seeing the very glaringly obvious problem, okay? And that is they did not target the GED specifically. They used this overly broad term. And by using this overly broad term, was able to allow the D.C. Circuit Court to drag in these other devices that were not in question, okay? So that whole argue of tailoring makes a hell of a lot more sense if I am reading this here and it is not talking specifically about the device that's being used at the JRC. A lot of government bodies are almost drilled into them. I can say this as someone who used to work for one of those state-run departments. They do so to cover their ass because we have to. We are nickeled and dime for every single piece of scrap of money that we get. And quite frankly, these state governments will use any reason, any reason at all to not provide us with more funding, okay? The problem with that is what you can see here. When you use over broad language, when you say ESDs as opposed to directly targeting one specific device, people like at the DC Circuit Court can use that to basically destroy any headway you might have made in regards to a device as horrific as the GED. There are certain things, especially if we're talking about government rulings, that you can't use broad terms with. Because if you do, well, we've seen the result, haven't we? Fun little fact, folks, and something I hope you all will be willing to help me with. As of right now, the FDA to this date has still not changed the wording and resubmitted the ban. See, all they would have had to done was to make it clear that they were not indeed targeting all ESDs, that they were targeting a specific device. Had they done so, we may or may not still be having to have this conversation. It is 
a hole so large I could drive a diesel truck with three trailers through. We're going to close on that, folks. We don't get very many views on this channel. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So please don't forget to hit the like button, hit subscribe, and don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time this evening. As always, we here at Spilling Tea hope you have a good one. I'll see you in a few minutes.